So, uh, good morning, everybody. Um, Stefan Schwarzer is a Pythonist for 15 years. He has uh, written articles and uh, a book on Python. Also, he's a regular speaker at uh, Linux and Python conferences. Um, and also, he maintains the FTP util uh, library, which is quite handy. Thank you. <laughs> um, today, he's going to discuss uh, problems and best practices for maintaining code for Python 2 and 3. Uh, it's going to be about like a 35 minutes talk, and we have five minutes for Q&A afterwards. So uh, please welcome Stefan. Okay. Thank you very much. Wonderful good morning. Um, okay. Yeah, I, w I want to give this talk yeah, about uh, supporting <laughs> Python 2 and 3 with the same code. Um, Maybe yeah, for the introduction, something about me. Yeah, okay, some things were already mentioned, uh, but um, okay, I have a degree in chemical engineering, but in uh, 2000, I kind of switched sides. I mean, I'd been programming since I was 15 before, and, and in 2000, I became a full time software developer. Since 2005, I'm self employed. I maintain all this FTP util client library. And the uh, starting point for this talk was, uh, yeah, that I was myself in the situation when users asked for Python 3 support and FTP util. Uh, there was one ticket, and then at some point there was a question on the mailing list, and yeah, and, but I had shied away a bit from this, and yeah, and so I went through. Okay. Yeah, last year we had this, uh, or I had this FTP Util 3.0 release with Python 3 in addition to uh, 2, 6 and 2.7. Um, okay. Yeah, Python 2 or Python 3. Yeah, I think most in the audience will, will actually have read this. Uh, this is from the Python website. When you go to the download section, uh, there's a link Python 2 or Python 3 and this is the wiki page you get when you click on that link. Um, yeah, so it, it says Python 2 is, is legacy. You, yeah, I mean, it doesn't really say you shouldn't use Python 2 anymore, but yeah, it's uh, strongly in the direction. Um, Python 3 is the present future of the language. Okay, so is uh, Python 2 obsolete? Uh, so in a way it is, yes. Uh, on the other hand, it isn't, because it's still very widely used. Uh, there's lots and lots of legacy code. Um, and um, yeah, Python 2 is also the yeah the pre-installer, the, the the version when you say uh, yum install Python or aptitude install Python, you get Python 2, uh, or it's even pre-installed usually on Ubuntu and and uh, also Fedora and uh, Red Hat. Um, okay, and Python 3 is optional. Uh, Python um, Red Hat Enterprise Linux is only yet getting there. Or yeah, I mean they have a Python 3 package now, but. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, also, if you want to host, if you buy hosting and don't do the hosting yourself, there are most more hosting offers available for Python 2, I think. And uh, many libraries um, don't have a Python 3 version yet, and yeah, I, I guess that's a reason why uh, some of you are here <laughs> because you want to change that. Okay. So my recommendation is use Python 3 if you can. And um, one thing I find very important is uh, also if you uh, migrate or adapt your library, you ease the transition for others who say, okay, I, need, I still need your library to migrate myself or uh, adapt myself, my software for Python 3. Okay, there are different approaches. Uh, the first one, or the yeah, in, in the beginning when Python 3 came out, uh, the recommendation from the Python development team was uh, use 2 to 3, write uh, Python 2 code, convert this to, to, to with uh, 2 to 3 with this command line tool. Um, then later there was some uh, 3 to 2 uh, tool. Um, I think it's rarely used, but the idea is that you, uh, that Python 3 code is usually looks a bit cleaner and it's nicer to be able to maintain Python 3 uh, code than to maintain Python 2 code. Okay, but what um, it seems the Python world ended up doing or mostly doing is uh, developing or having the same code for Python 2 and 3. Uh, so you don't have to uh, run 2 to 3 um, 
neither neither the user needs to run this nor do you during development if you want to test in Python for Python two and three. So it's just always the same source code. Okay. Uh, yeah, one major problem. Um, on yeah, okay. I mean, there are many things. If you look at um, what's new in Python 3.0, there's lots of stuff. But I, but I think the most important thing uh, when it comes to this adaptation of the code for Python 3 is uh, the sprites versus Unicode topic. And so I want to yeah say maybe refresh um, so, so on some uh, something on this. Okay, uh, we have in, yeah, in both Python 2 and 3, we have yeah, bytes, or bytes type, or byte strings. Um, I think the Python 2 terminology is mostly byte strings, and uh, in Python 3, you usually, when you read documentation, it says bytes, it's not really byte strings, yeah? so because the intention is you don't use it for strings, or not for character data, or only for encoded character data. Okay, so these are the yeah, kind of raw bytes that you store on a disk or send over a socket yeah, when you need to make a decision. Now, I have Unicode, but it needs to go somewhere and I need to encode it. Uh, on the other hand, uh, Unicode text uh, represents character data where um, characters have number code, code points. Uh, but, and this is unrelated to how the characters are stored. So it's not just another um, character encoding like Latin 1 or so, or some code page, I, I don't know, yeah? Um, but um, the characters are numbered, these code points, and uh, at this point it's unrelated to how, they, these by, how this is later represented in bytes. Okay, so this Unicode text can be encoded to bytes. Yeah, you can choose an encoding. Um, yeah, of course the encoding should support the characters you have in, in your string, in your Unicode string. So if you have, for example, Chinese characters, you can't convert this, encode this to Latin 1. Uh, okay, and this is uh, at the bottom of the page. This is just one example. Uh, these would be the Unicode code points for this German word hören to here. Um, and this is um, and, uh, the bytes if you encode this Unicode string to uh, UTF-8. Yeah, so this one byte becomes these two bytes, otherwise it's unchanged, but this depends completely on the decoding, uh, on, yeah, on the encoding you, you apply. Um, okay. Yeah, uh, something that might be confusing while you are working on this adoption for Python 3 is uh, that both Python 2 and 3 call their <laughs> default string type. So if you write a byte literal uh, in Python 3, this is the byte string type, the binary type here. And in Python 3, it's actually the Unicode style type, the text type. Uh, uh, yeah, you also have, yeah, the, the byte string type is named bytes in, in Python 3, and Unicode uh, is the Unicode type in Python 2. Okay. Uh, yeah, one major change, and this is, yeah, again, one of the difficulties uh, for Python 3 support often is uh, that in Python 2 you can uh, just, yeah, add a byte string and a Unicode string, yeah, with this prefix. And um, mostly it works unless uh, this byte string contains anything non-ASCII. Then you get a Unicode decode error um, dependent on the process data. So, so one day you run the code and it runs fine, and you, uh, the other day you read a text file which has an umlaut or something or some special character, and uh, you get an exception. And Python 3, this has changed, and you, can't, you don't have these implicit uh, conversions anymore get a type error every time you want to add a byte string and a Unicode string, which I think mostly is a good thing, but yeah, but, but it uh, makes it, this migration harder, this adoption for Python 3. Uh, in Python 3, you have to be explicit, and for example, if you have a byte string which has this B prefix, you need to decode it um, explicitly, then this becomes a Unicode string, and this is in Python 3, yeah, this is a Python uh, Unicode literal as well. Um, okay, but in code, in actual code, you shouldn't usually do it like this, yeah, but I, I will talk about this later. Okay, uh, also in Python 3, yeah, I mean, which I find 
a thing that I find logical uh, that makes sense is that uh, everything or almost everything which took um, strings or byte strings in Python 2 now requires Unicode strings. So in Python 3, this is again by default, this is a Unicode string, this works, but if you pass the constructor of decimal a byte string, it complains and gives you a type error. Uh, there's also a new uh, file API in Python 3. Um, yeah, the, here the thing is that um, if you, yeah, in Python 2, if you open a text file, uh, it, it still gives you byte strings. Yeah, if you open a text file for reading, um, it always gives you byte strings. Uh, yeah, while, whereas in Python 3, it gives you Unicode strings, really. Yeah? In Python 2, it just does, uh, whether you choose text or binary, only changes the line ending conversions. And there's also no more file objects. The return value of open depends on the arguments of uh, the open call. The good thing for this migration, for this adoption for Python 3 is that this um, open function, which is the built-in open in Python 3, is also available in the I.O. module in Python 2.6 and 2.7. Uh, one thing that tripped me up in another yeah, small tool is that uh, standard in and standard out and, and Argument values here, this is ArcV, uh, are Unicode strings. Yeah, or, I mean, system uh, STD in read gives you Unicode strings, and write requires a Unicode argument. But you can work around by using buffer, uh, the buffer attributes, which give you the file object, which um, works with the raw bytes or the binary data. Okay, steps. Yeah, so now. <laughs> First part was introduction now, uh, yeah, but how you actually do this migration or some tips or steps here. Um, okay, you should have automated unit tests, if possible unit tests. Um, I liked this uh, keynote from Emily Bach uh, on, I think, Tuesday, uh, where, where she also mentioned uh, approval testing, yeah, which, uh, so, so if you don't have unit tests, but I, I recommend you have them, um, if you don't have unit tests, so you should at, at least have some automated tests that you can run on your code. Uh, the code, uh, the unit test should pass 100% uh, under Python 2, and since you are just starting out supporting Python 3, you can't expect that, uh, <laughs> that they work on Python 3. Uh, actually, uh, lots of these tests will fail if you just do the experiment and you have unit tests uh, for a Python 2 version and you run the same test with Python 3, uh, you probably get lots of uh, failures and errors, yeah. Um, okay, that's completely normal. Uh, also, uh, sometimes I, I notice that, uh, for example, in FTP util, that uh, most of these failures uh, come from string literals in the test code, in the unit tests. Uh, so, and sometimes you, uh, another thing is that sometimes you only need to change uh, a few functions uh, which yeah, uh, do the conversions in your code and uh, maybe even then um, lots of your tests pass again, even under Python 3. Uh, you can also do this uh, test or try running uh, Pi, even the Python 2 version with the option minus three, this is supported in Python, I think from Python 2.6 up, um, will give you some information, uh, will print some warnings or information on things that need to change for Python 3. Yeah, while you are uh, changing your code for, to adapt to Python 3, yeah, make sure yeah, then, yeah, you have to um, change the the actual code, the production code, and the tests, uh, and, and keep them in sync. And so, so, so you don't have, uh, yeah, if you can, not that many failed tests. Okay, uh, one tip. Um, I found this nice tool, prob I, I can imagine many of you know this already, this is Tox. Um, nice tool because it, you can easily, easily run Python 2 and 3, um, the test both on a, on a Python 2 and 3. And 
yeah, so so you can check if they still work on Python two and if they already work or to to which extent they work for Python three. Uh, it's, I also like that it uh, yeah implicitly checks uh, whether the packaging works for your uh, library or for your code. Okay, uh, since we are going to support Python two and three with the same code, um, you run. T I mean, 2 to 3 is still useful, but I, re I recommend running it once. Uh, so, uh, for example, print became a function, and some the exception syntax yeah, changed uh, in Python 3, or the required exception syntax. Uh, and 2 to 3 does many of these yeah, straightforward conversions. So, in this way, it's nice. Um, you should uh, have a look at the documentation on for two to three uh, on the yeah about the fixers. Uh, there's also yeah these are yeah, different steps, different conversions that can be applied. So so it's not just everything or nothing, uh, but but you can yeah uh, yeah in individually turn on uh, certain conversions. Uh, you should exclude the future fixer because this removes all from future import uh, statements. What you don't want, you want to want to keep the from future imports in for your Python 2 com, um, code. Uh, many of the changes will be. Um, you don't want to keep them literally. I mean, the, the print conversions you probably want want to keep as they are, and uh, some changes, for example. Uh, changed uh, module names, for example, config parser in Python 2, which was spelled with a capital C and capital P, is now all lowercase in Python 3. So 2 to 3, uh, it expects that you that Python 3 is your final target destination. It removes, um, it just changes the import to all lowercase config parser. But uh, if you look at the changes that 2 to 3 did, you see, um, yeah, you, you do a diff with a version control system and um, you see what it changes. And so, you, for example, you see the changed import statement and you need to take care of this, have different code or switch or something later for Python 3. Um, yeah, yeah, really check all the changes. Uh, one, someone I talked with, I think, uh, the, uh, yesterday or so, um, yeah, mentioned or suggested uh, running the fixers individually. So with each diff, you see the changes only from this fixer. Um, of course, this requires that you uh, know all the fixers. I mean, you can get this information, but yeah, you have to make sure or should make sure that you don't forget any of them. Okay, and after you ran two to three and yeah, made your changes, uh, everything um, at this point should run again under Python two. Okay, and if you're lucky, you already have an API that um, yeah that you can keep for Python three, or doesn't make you jump through hoops if you want to support Python two and three. I was not so lucky with FTP util, so uh, I had. Yeah, yeah. I, I would say I had to change APIs to support Python two and three. So the new FTP till three is not backwards compatible with uh, FTP till two eight, which was the previous version. Um, okay, and the standard library in Python two, um, yeah, almost everything that accepts a string accepts uh, either Unicode or bytes. And in Python three, yeah, with rare exceptions, you have to use Unicode for strings. And my suggestion, uh, therefore, is use uh, Unicode for text data. If you have to, if you want to decide on, uh, should, you should decide on on Unicode for text data, and not keep the bytes interface that you may have for Python two. And you need to know, or yeah, even define what uh, data is text data. Yeah, so there are sometimes um, corner cases uh, where yeah, you really have to think, or maybe even define what, whether something is supposed to be bytes or Unicode. Yeah, one recommendation is uh, encode and decode text at system boundaries. Yeah, so everywhere, yeah, this example is uh, reading a file from, from the file system, uh, decoded, 
And uh, later, if, you, for example, you want to send this over a socket to some other host, you encode this, but only then. Yeah, so, so you should try to have most of your code deal with Unicode strings. So if you, yeah, I mean, as far as strings are concerned, I mean, <laughs> of course, the other types are not affected. Um, yeah, so if you look at code, so you don't have to think, ah, in Python 2, this will do that thing. On this case, I will have byte strings. And when I run this on Python 3, these strings will, yeah, I think they will be Unicode strings or something like that. Yeah, so you should avoid this. Yeah, you should try to, um, if you have strings in your code, um, yeah, try to get to the point that, yeah, you can confidently say that or know the locations where it's Unicode and um, where it is not. Yeah. Okay. Um, sometimes it can get yeah a bit hard. Uh, for example, in FTP util, yeah, maybe I should show something. Um, this is code you can write with FTP util. Yeah, it's mostly sitting on top of. Uh, yeah, uh, encapsulates uh, FTP, FTP lib, FTP, uh, but it's more high level. Yeah, you can uh, write, the intention is that you can write code as if you were using the OS module or SH util module, yeah, OS path. You can even, you can do, you can use walk and uh, list here on these host objects. You support the, the with statement is supported. You can use is file or can any of these convenience uh, methods like download, for example. And uh, you can also open remote files, yeah, and read, read from remote files, for example, or write to remote files. Okay, and for, yeah, since the, uh, yeah, one difficulty with FTP util was that I don't only have to uh, convert between bytes and unicodes uh, for the, for file contents, for the remote files, but the uh, harder part was dealing with the, uh, with the encoding of file names or directory names when I sent them over a socket. And I also, checked a bit, yeah, these are some sections. So what you see on the next slide is this upper right corner, and on the slide after that, you see this part. Uh, so for example, I, I made this diagram and uh, attached notes and yeah, how these uh, interfaces behave on both Python 2 and 3 to, to, to wrap my mind around this and yeah, get this straight, how I should deal with this. Yeah. And this is uh, the the other part where I, I'm since I'm using FTP lib. How does uh, FTP lib handle this in Python two and Python three? Yeah, where are the conversions? Because uh, the string arguments for files uh, that uh, FTP lib uses are it also requires Unicode. Yeah? And so I was wondering how what do how do they encode this or where how do they know the encoding or something? Yeah? When I want to finally send this to the FTP server, this file name. Yeah. So it really depends on your project how complicated that is. Sometimes maybe it's straightforward, then you are kind of lucky. I mean, you are even more lucky if you can keep your API and only make internal changes. But um, especially if you need to change the API, if you can't come up with a clean API with, that is yeah, expected by the user or um, yeah, that, that a user can easily work with in Python 2 and 3, yeah, then you need to think harder. Okay, and that's really the part that can't be automated. Uh, some more tips. Um, don't let uh, functions or methods accept both Unicode or byte strings. So uh, something like, yeah, if I get a byte string, I convert this to Unicode, or if I get a Unicode string, I convert this to a byte string or something, uh, because this makes the API confusing, and you always have to think about, yeah, is this now, or under which conditions is this a byte string or Unicode string, and uh, it also makes the tests more complicated, yeah, because you always have to uh, check both um, uh, this have to check both for Unicode and byte strings for the arguments. And imagine you have something 
that takes two or three strings and you want to test all combinations maybe even. Yeah? So you should try to avoid this. Um, yeah, special case uh, file-like objects or strings for paths uh, because in both in Python 2 and 3 you can use all these APIs that accept file names or directory names with uh, either byte strings uh, or Unicode strings and uh, it will, yeah, under the hood will call different APIs on the operating system. So, and this also gave me some headaches with FTP util because I do this as well. And so, in this case, I, I have to accept both Unicode or Bytes and do different things uh, because I try to mimic these APIs from, for example, the OS module. Okay, if you, um, yeah, but if you don't accept the strings, but let uh, accept file-like objects, so this is handled before, so it's not part of your library anymore. So if you can get away with this, <laughs> yeah, you, you, you probably should uh, use file-like objects or instead of accepting file name strings. I mean, you can, of course, still have this for user convenience, but this makes it a bit harder. So, um, yeah. Uh, also avoid uh, different APIs for Python 2 and 3. For example, for FTP util, I was thinking at some point for backwards compatibility, when you run on Python 3 and I open a text file for reading, uh, it should give you, uh, as before, to be backwards compatible, uh, give you byte strings and Python 3 give you Unicode strings because you expect this under Python 3. Uh, but this would really be a mess, yeah. I, I made up my mind and uh, wrote summaries on the advantages and disadvantages and posted this to Complank Python. What do you think? How should I deal with this? And uh, I got two answers, both um, uh, saying explicitly go for the unified API, even if it breaks backwards compatibility. Okay, and I, I think this was a very good decision to make. Uh, yeah. Uh, also make a list of changes before actually actually changing the API because um, yeah this will yeah hopefully make sure that you don't forget a change yeah you know, that you still maybe need to change different parts of your code and uh, yeah don't want to get forget something um, and it also helps you write some release notes for example for FTP util I wrote uh, what's new in FTP util 3.0 so I yeah I could check this list and make sure I don't forget anything uh, you could also use commit messages but um, commit messages are usually more fine-grained and um, are maybe not so useful for this purpose yeah and another tip um, yeah, uh, if you need to change the API, uh, increase the major version number, the first part, and yeah, then, yeah, I mean, it's, after all, adding Python 3 support is a major change, and uh, so you can get away with, uh, with the API changes, yeah. So I, I think it's justified. I mean, it's not just a trick, but I, I think it's fine. Okay, uh, some other tips in general on this uh, Python 3 adaption. Uh, read what's new in Python 3.0, yeah, at least. I actually recommend you also, I mean, not instead, but also read this uh, porting to Python 3. I have links at the end of the slides and I will put the slides online. Uh, but even if you just search on the net for porting to Python 3, you will probably get this website. Uh, this is yeah, practically an online book, which is really nice. Yeah, if possible, support only Python 2.6 and up. Um, because Python 2 and Python, uh, Python 2.6 and Python 2.7 have some very useful Python 3 features backported. For example, you can say from future import print function and you will have print as a function with the same behavior as in Python 3. Also, the exception syntax, so up, uh, starting from Python 2.6, you can write except exception class as exception object. Uh, you can't do this in Python 2.5. And if you need the um, exception object uh, for exception handling and want to support Python 2.5 and, and lower versions, it gets really messy and it's not really nice. It, it isn't fun, I guess. Um, also, Python 2.6 uh, and 2.7 have this I.O. module. So you can just, you can say, um, 
if you want to, uh, from I.O. import open, and then you have the open, the build, yeah, like the built-in open function from Python 3, but have it available in Python 2. <coughs> Uh, if you need to support Python 2.5, you can use uh, the 6 library. Um, and yeah, uh, so yeah, in summary, anything below 2.6 will probably be awkward to support. Uh, I, okay, thanks. Uh, yeah, okay. Um, there will still be some things that need to be different for Python 2 and 3. And I recommend, I mean, not the, I'm not the only person recommending this. Uh, I saw on the net to, to use a compat module, for example, for Python, uh, for FTP util. It looks like this. Uh, you just say if Python 2, uh, if the Python version is Python 2, uh, by the way, um, use this indexing if you want to run your code on Python 2.6. Because uh, in Python 2.7, this is a name tuple, and you can write dot major, but this doesn't work on Python 2.6. Okay, and here I have uh, int types, a tuple of int types, Unicode type, bytes type. Now this is much easier than reading the code and and uh, trying to re to remember, reiterate. Uh, yeah, I'm now on Python 2, and uh, the str I'm seeing here is the bytes type or something. Uh, this is. Um, yeah, error prone. Okay. Yeah, uh, if you have a larger project, uh, also have a look at the future or six libraries. I think the future library looks a bit more yeah modern. It's, it's actually newer than the six library. Uh, for FTP util, I decided to not use it because FTP util doesn't have any dependencies uh, apart from the standard library, and I didn't want to introduce uh, dependency just for these few things you saw in my compat.py. Okay, and to uh, yeah, for every Python file, I mean that's at least what I suggest. Uh, these are some changes which make your Python two code behave more like Python three code. Uh, for example, the abs absolute imports are required. Um, the float division or the integer division rather has changed uh, from Python two to three. And for example, if you use from future import division, you get this uh, Python three behavior for integer division. I already mentioned the print function. Unicode literals will, when you do from future import Unicode literals, all the literal strings in your code will, uh, even under Python 2, will become Unicode strings, Unicode string literals. Uh, you, alternatively, you can use, um, uh, oh, this, uh, yeah, alternative to Unicode literals in Python 3.3 and up is the U prefix. This was removed in Python 3.0, but was reintroduced in 3.3. Yeah. But you still have to know uh, what string type your literals are, and yeah. I, I mean, it's maybe a better of taste uh, whether you uh, generally use Unicode literals with the import, or if you use the U prefix explicitly. Okay, then summary. Uh, so Python 2 is still in wider use, but yeah, I recommend using or developing for Python 3 if you can. Yeah, using the same source code for to support Python 2 and 3 is feasible, makes sense. Uh, also, larger projects are doing this. Django, for example, have uh, gone this way and have the same source code for Python 2 and 3. And you need to know the concepts of Unicode bytes and encodings and the changes from Python 2 to 3. So, yeah, again, read uh, what's new in Python 3.0 and uh, porting to Python 3. Yeah, you should have tests for adapting to Python 3. Otherwise, yeah, it, it's much more difficult. You should at least have some tests, even if you have uh, yeah, kind of acceptance tests or appro these approval tests that Emily mentioned. Yeah, you should prefer APIs in Python 3 style. Yeah, so more write modern Python, uh, plan and implement necessary API changes carefully. I mean, as you would design, I mean, if you designed your API for your library from scratch, maybe even, yeah, do, do what makes sense for Python 2 and 3. Yeah, I already mentioned reading, uh, 
what's new in Python 3.0, and uh, yeah, if you can, if you can actually uh, use uh, require um, at least Python 2.6 because this will give you several of these future imports, and um, uh, you don't uh, if if you require if you want to support Python 2.5, for example, yeah, you have to write some convoluted code maybe. Yeah, okay, that's that's all. Uh, thank you very much, Stefan Schwarzer. So uh, if you have a question, please raise your hand and I will come by with a microphone. Um, well, this is half question, half remark. Um, I, I have a project where I also uh, maintain both Python 2 and 3 at the same time with the same code base. But I noticed that it, while it is feasible and Cool to be able to do that. You give something up, so you give some of the features in Python 3 up. So, for instance, I spent a long time struggling to find out if there's an equivalent in Python 3 of the admittedly weird construction in Python 2, where we can re-raise. So you 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 catch an exception, and you want to raise another exception with the same trace back as the original one, and you don't like yeah, to yeah, raise yeah. exception comma. Can you go to the microphone? Because I can't yeah, hear. Sorry, sorry. Um, okay, in uh, Python three, yeah, what you probably mean is you already have this um, these chained exceptions, and in Python two, I think uh, you you can use an additional comma separated yeah argument yeah. for uh, to to give a trace back object or something, um, but but I fear in the end you have to do it yeah kind of manually and and setting these extra attributes. Yeah. That's also one thing I thought about, yeah. Yeah, uh, this one. Uh, thank you for the talk. It was really interesting tips. Uh, but what about porting C extensions? Uh, C extensions, like for Python. Okay, this is more complicated. I never know. Sorry, sorry. Okay. <laughs> Um, I haven't migrated or adapted any C extensions so far, so I can't, I, okay, well, from what I heard, C, uh, changing C extensions is much more complicated. It is, uh, but there is a document that ships with Python, I think it's in the how-tos directory, that gives you guidance on porting C extensions from Python 2 to Python 3. Mm -hmm. Okay, any more questions? I think, uh, let me check. Last question. Thank you for the talk. I think right now you're one of the most competent persons for the topic in the world. If you, <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> if you would uh, re-convert your FTP util library again, starting from scratch with all the knowledge you have now, ah. uh, what do you measure it, it would take in, in by means of percentage to, to do it again? <sighs> With my knowledge now, uh, I can really maybe a week or maybe less. I, I really don't know. I, I mean, I mean, this was stretched out over several weeks because this is a free time project. Yeah, you had to, to find so, all these things out. You yeah, gave okay, this nice presentation okay, okay, okay. Like uh, all this knowledge I, I, now. <laughs> I, I have this habit reading a lot of stuff before I start. Yeah, so mm -hmm. so I, I did some research before. Um, for example, this co compat module is also mentioned by Armin Ronacher in some blog post mm -hmm. or something. This recommendation, uh, but, but I think it makes sense anyway. Um, yeah. So if I would say. It takes several person days if you just mechanically apply all these. Uh, okay, and okay. Some 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 of the yeah kind of mechanical changes can be done by two to three. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, this at least helps. Um, I, I find it very useful to run two to three. Not not only um, yeah because it. I mean, you should read what's new in Python 3, but running two to three on your code will also give you some insights or maybe some things you forgot. When when you uh, read the what's new document, mm -hmm. yeah, so it will see uh, change some things, and and you might wonder, uh, oh, what did it change there? Is this something? Obviously, there seems to be something different in Python three uh, in yeah, comparison yeah. to Python two. Yeah. 
Okay, thank yeah. you. Yeah. Okay, thanks a lot, Stefan.